If you want to take unique, stunning landscape astrophotographs, you really have to get out in the landscape during the daytime because finding compositions in the dark in a place you haven't been before is practically impossible. Once I've found an interesting composition, I'll usually take a reference photo on my smartphone or my camera, and if I'm going after the Milky Way, I'll make use of the augmented reality on photo pills to see how the Milky Way would look above that composition. It's also super important for risk assessment because you never know what dangers there may be in the landscape. There might be big holes or big drops in the ground, and you need to be <laughs> pretty wary of any cliff edges just to be safe. But check out this view, it's incredible. Oh, this is gonna be quite a nice shot. All right, so now that I've found a few compositions, got some reference photos, time to start planning. And I think I'm gonna give Raphael a call from PhotoPills, see if he wants to help me plan some shots with these beautiful views. So head on over to the Photo Pills channel to watch that video first, and then come back to see me take the images. So I'm about halfway on the hike to where I'm going to photograph the Milky Way this morning. And if you've watched the video on photo pills where me and Raphael planned a few shots, I'm going to location two. Location one was very south facing, whereas location two is more southeast facing. And because it's the start of Milky Way season where the Milky Way core is rising into the southeast in the pre-dawn hours, I'm going to prioritize location number two. And I wanted to share with you guys another application that I use heavily for my landscape astrophotography. And it's all about exploring the outdoors, finding new places and interesting compositions. And until recently, I was using an app called ViewRanger. But unfortunately, updates and support for ViewRanger are going to stop very soon because they've made a new app called Outdoor Active. So I've been using that for the past couple of months and I've been quite enjoying it. It's very similar to ViewRanger. So you have nice terrain maps and importantly, it's got all of the hiking trails on there as well, which you certainly won't find in Google Maps. A lot of people try and use Google Maps in the outdoors and it, <laughs> it's just useless. But all of the hiking trails are on here. You can plan your routes, but other people have already planned certain hikes and trails and take images along the way so you can get a good idea of what views you're going to find and what the landscape looks like. And so this is the hike that I'm doing today. You can see I've already done it and I've taken some photos on the way as references and added them to the map. And you can also see data like the elevation profile, so how much ascent and descent you have. And you can see the path is about three kilometers long. And the images that I've taken along this trail saved onto the app, which is perfect. But I'm gonna get moving because I wanna take some photographs along the way as well, because there's more to the night sky than just the Milky Way core, especially because it's new moon, which means I can enjoy dark skies all night. So let's go and get some shots before the Milky Way comes up. All right, so I'm just gonna grab a panorama of the Winter Milky Way Arch because it's not all about the Milky Way core. There are other regions of the Milky Way. You've got this region here running past Canis Major and Orion, Gemini, and through Auriga. And of course, it's not as bright and as colorful as the Milky Way core, but I'm gonna do a tracked panorama. So I've got the Move, Shoot, Move star tracker. I've polar aligned that 
using the laser after checking flight radar, of course, because the last thing I want to do is shine a laser towards an aircraft. And I've also got the V Star Tracker platform from Move Shoot Move on top. So that levels my ball head and it makes panning for a panorama a lot easier. But I'm a little bit upset because I forgot my filters. I left my filters back in my room and I really would love to have my star glow filter right now because there are so many beautiful bright stars in that region of the night sky and the filter would just make them glow and bloat and pop. But I'm gonna have to make do without the filter. So I'll show you that image right now. So this was the resultant image and if I'm honest I wasn't overly pleased with it. I think if I had arrived a little bit earlier the Milky Way arch would have been a bit higher in the sky and it also would have been a bit more southward. So it would have been a bit more symmetrical with the arch of the foreground. So I think I might go back to that image at some point and uh, this time I'm not going to forget my star glow filter. Alright, so I'm in position for the Milky Way shot that I came here for. Um, it should be rising from behind that mountain over there in a couple of hours. But it's about 1am now, so it's another four hours until I can get that shot. So, the biggest issue is that it's not the most comfortable place. <laughs> There's literally no flat ground, like I'm on a sloping, stony mountainside. And I basically got my bag, I'm leaning against my bag. I've got a multi-mat to sit on, which is super comfortable. And these rocks are super sharp, so I've even got my buff underneath my thighs just to try and protect my thighs from the sharp rocks here. But just going to ride it out. I've got some munchies, some coffee, some chocolate, some cashews and pistachios, and just going to wait it out. And whilst I'm waiting, I've just set up a time lapse, which is also going to be a star trail image using the TT Artisans 11mm fisheye lens, a lens that I've just been playing with lately. Um, so I thought it'd be cool to see how a star trail image looks at that sort of crazy, crazy wide angle fisheye distortion. So I'm going to leave that running for a few hours and sadly going to have to cut it short when the Milky Way arrives because uh, I'm going to need to use that camera to photograph the Milky Way, so... Not the most comfortable of places, but I've got the most incredible view, which kind of makes up for it. So this was the resulting Star Trail image of stacking all 400 of those images. And if you want to know how to take Star Trails, how to set up your gear and even how to edit them, there's a completely free video on my YouTube channel already. And whilst that time lapse was running, I used my other camera to catch a 55mm Vertorama with Ro of Yuki as the main subject in the night sky and I'll post all of the EXIF details to all of the images in the video description down below. Alright so the Milky Way is nearly in position it's just rising from above the mountain in the distance there so I've started working on the shot and I'm just grabbing the foreground exposures first it's going to be a vertical panorama uh, probably two or three shots of the foreground and I'm using the Sony 24mm f1.4 G Master shooting at f2.2 three minutes and ISO 640 for each exposure. So I'm just going to grab the foreground and I've got the star tracker out again so I'm going to track my sky so I can do two minutes or three minutes on the sky as well. Get some real good detail in the Milky Way. But it's looking incredible. Obviously I haven't seen the Milky Way call for six months and uh, yeah you do miss it. <laughs> Sorry for these awful camera angles. I haven't really got much space to work with, but there's my first sky exposure. Let's see how that come out. 
Bit of star trading at three minutes. Or maybe try jigging the polar alignment again. I don't like this cliff edge. Unfortunately, Polaris, the North Star, was hiding behind a tree, so I had to make a bit of a guess as to where it was just to get some rough polar alignment. Hopefully now the tracking is a little bit better. We have some sharp stars because things go smoothly and I wrap up the, the image that I came for pretty quickly and smoothly. I might be able to do another much wider panorama, maybe with the Milky Way arching across the sky, the whole Milky Way. All right, we've got some sharp stars at three minutes, so the tracking is doing pretty well, even though I only did a very rough polar alignment. So that's good. I'm happy that's tracking well. I'm going to do a few three minute exposures, maybe five or hopefully six, stack those to get rid of some of the noise and then put that onto the panorama of the foreground. Oh, I love it when a plan comes together and everything just goes well. Oh, beautiful. That is a wrap from me. As you can see, twilight has well and truly kicked in. I've just finished doing that panorama. I don't have much faith that it's going to be that good, but I tried anyway. But just gone 6 a.m. I've got about an hour to get back to my room. So, all right, guys. If you're going to enjoy the night sky anytime soon, I wish you good luck and clear skies. Nice.